the Russian nuclear-powered submarine Kursk sank in the Barents Sea on August 12, 2000. For an unexplained reason, years would pass before the Kursk fate was fully established and there is still some debate about it today. But it is difficult to help but wonder what happened that day outside. We will examine what transpired to the Russian submarine today after it exploded and killed 118 crew members. Are you also curious about the stories behind the largest, most powerful, most dangerous ships in the world? Stay tuned. This time it is the Kursk. Subscribe and find out what really happened to this Russian giant. The submarine known as the Kursk was a robust, massive achievement of Russian engineering. The Kursk was specifically referred to as an Oscar II Project 949 ANT. That is a cruise missile submarine with nuclear propulsion that was created specifically to target NATO aircraft carrier groups. The Oscar IIs were constructed with a double hull separated by 3.5 millimeters from an engineering standpoint and they had 10 different compartments in order to enable the sub to penetrate the arctic ice cap, the sail featured a reinforced double cover. Additionally, it was 10 meters longer than the previous Oscars, measuring around 154 meters in length. 11 of these sandwiches were created between 1985 and 1999 and some of them are still in use today. They were completely caught off guard when the curse occurred during a training session. On August 12, 2000, an explosion rocked the Kursk as it was conducting training maneuvers in Barents Sea at 11.28 am. The ship soon descended to the ocean floor, 354 feet below the surface, where it came to rest at the bottom of the icy abyssal depths. A second, far larger explosion inside the Kursk happened less than two minutes after the first one. The Russians responded by dispatching rescue ships, which found the disaster site the following morning. However, a number of events led to each initial rescue attempt failing, including unfavorable weather, the Kursk angle, and maybe most critically, a dearth of suitable rescue tools. Norway, the United States, and the United Kingdom all pledged to help in rescue efforts. However, it appears that after watching the hunt for Red October, the Russians initially rejected the offer of aid. Four days after the original catastrophe, the Russians had a change of heart and consented to accept outside assistance. Vladimir Putin, the freshly elected president, was on holiday in a Black Sea resort as all of this was happening. You would think that the new president would take immediate action after losing a nuclear submarine, but not Putin. Putin extended his vacation by four more days as opposed to cutting it short. Putin maintains that because he is always in contact with the military, it wouldn't have changed how the issue was handled. Even he acknowledged that going back to Moscow school would have been preferable in hindsight, if only for the purpose of good PR. In an interview with the late Larry King, he made this admission. It could have been a big mistake to wait so long to beg for international assistance. On October the 21st, Norwegian divers eventually succeeded in breaking through the airlocks of the Kursk but they were unable to locate the survivors they were looking for. Instead, they discovered that the cabin had flooded and they came to the devastating conclusion that all 118 crew members had perished. Saddest of all, they discovered a message in Lieutenant Captain Dmitry Kolznikov's pocket when they discovered his dead body. There were 23 survivors, according to the report, which was prepared some hours after the explosion. Sadly, they were not given enough time by the rescue teams to reach them. At first, some senior Russian authorities asserted that a collision with a NATO submarine that was watching the operations was to blame for the mishap. It was the biggest attack submarine in the entire globe, over three times bigger than the largest submarines in the US Navy. It must have been a huge explosion that ultimately destroyed the curse. Seismic measurements of the event seem to support that. Here's what happened. Seismographs picked up the first explosion, which was very minor. A second explosion that was astonishingly 250 times greater than the first occurred after 135 seconds. The second explosion was so powerful that it was audible in a 
Alaska, which is located on the other side of the Arctic Circle. Regardless of whether there was a collision, the US acknowledged deploying submarines nearby to watch over Russian naval drills. Additionally, following the original disaster, Russians' dive crews allegedly discovered a proportion of Conning Tower from a British or American nuclear submarine. On September 26, 2001, roughly a year after the catastrophe, Kursk was raised using 100 million US dollars, the greatest technology in a global team of professionals. Unfortunately, in order to bring the sub to the surface, the team had to cut off the front hull from the rest of it, leaving the best proof of what caused the explosions at the bottom of the ocean. In 2005, French produced documentary Kursk, a submarine in troubled waters, proposed that a number of explanations may have contributed to the tragedy. The exact circumstances surrounding what occurred, the Kursk, are still unknown. What do you think then? What do you think caused the Kursk to end? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe our channel.